Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you um, for uh, being here and to uh, also for our um, stakeholders and student representative to accept uh, maybe a move because I saw, okay, uh, to accept our uh, invitation. Why we are here? Um, so, University of Trieste. In the specific, the um, work package uh, uh, of the project five uh, and the uh, Department of Humanities and Professor Tulia Cattell and Robert Altin, the leading uh, our task in this uh, project. We, uh, with other people, they organized this event that you can see on the on the slide. We thought that it was important uh, to um, start a new idea of internship, student internship within the Transport for Europe project. So Transport for Europe project is uh, um, a European project. There was the idea is creating a multicultural and multilinguistic campus, international European campus, between at the beginning between seven universities uh, in Italy, in Poland, in Lithuania, Estonia, Bulgaria, Germany, and uh, uh, Spain. So now. The, the alliance of this seven university is uh, became ten university, so will be the biggest uh, university uh, alliance uh, in Europe. So the three new um, university that uh, countries and universities that uh, um, joined our project are the University of Primoska in uh, Slovenia in Koper Capodistria. The University of uh, um, uh, Portugal, the Catholic University of Portugal, and the University Jean Maritain in uh, France. So, um, the idea of the, uh, this project Transform for Europe is to create, uh, give the opportunity of students to uh, spend a period of time of study in another university. So it's a kind of, we can say, another level of the Erasmus program, okay? And all the university that is involved in this project are um, try to put all the programs, uh, university programs together and to, um, in one sense, we can say, to find a, a, a common uh, base of the new knowledge, uh, uh, European knowledge for the future of Europe. The idea of this workshop, workshop is to try um, and to discuss, to try to put the, uh, some idea, okay, we call it work, workshop, but it's a workshop we can call a focus group, a round table, whatever. But the idea is to put in contact stakeholders and students. So, for uh, usually stakeholders are uh, um, communicate with the university, but now we are changing completely the approach. So we put the students to uh, talk and discuss with the stakeholders. Why? Because our idea, the leading this workshop, is to create an internship, a European internship between students and stakeholders uh, within the uh, Transport for Europe project. So, I'm not saying anything else, um, anything more um, about uh, the workshop and the project, because I think it's better to, um, to see and to, to listen what you have to, to say about this idea. The title of the, the workshop is Bring the Gap Between Stakeholders Through Students' Commitment Within the Transform for Europe Alliance. So, the title is already something like inspiring you to discuss about uh, this subject. And I uh, leave the floor to the, our chair, um, Giulia Basso, 
and thank you again. Thank you. So welcome everybody. We are uh, a lot, so we'll try to be short. I will start with a brief presentation uh, of the stakeholders uh, that are present uh, here. And so I, I will ask to uh, raise your hand or something like this to get to know each other. Uh, we have uh, Thomas Berkmanas. Uh, sorry, I, probably I m will misspell something, but <laughs> uh, an associate professor at the Faculty of Law of uh, Vitautas Magnus University in Lithuania. Uh, but from the stakeholder side, uh, he will represent uh, legal uh, judicial uh, profession. Uh, he's a member of the Lithuanian Judicial Ethics and Discipline Commission uh, and he works uh, for a Lithuanian National Courts uh, Administration. Thank you. Uh, then we have Aurelia Stelmokiene. No, she, she is not present. Okay. Lisa Caliula. Hello, Lisa. Uh, Lisa is uh, an, uh, an art historian and curator working uh, at the painting collection of the Art Museum uh, uh, of Estonia, uh, which is uh, one of the biggest uh, art institutions uh, in, uh, in Estonia. Thank you to be here. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Fabrizio Rovatti. Uh, from uh, Area Science Park, is uh, a technologist manager. Um, he was uh, the director of uh, Innovation Factory, that was the certified and in-house incubator company of Area Science Park. Uh, Area Science Park is a national research uh, body established uh, in uh, 1978 to develop and support uh, scientific and technological research in uh, our region uh, through Venezia Giulia. Uh, we have uh, Anna Comini. Uh, she has uh, been working in Area Science Park for 11 years uh, as part of the Welcome Office uh, uh, of the region and uh, Euraxis uh, Center staff. Uh, and she supports uh, foreign students and researchers coming to our region. So probably uh, you can give us uh, some uh, useful indication uh, on this side. Uh, then we have uh, Georgia Kakovic. Uh, she's a researcher of the Institu Institute of International Sociology of Gorizia. Uh, and the Institute of International Sociology was founded uh, in uh, 1978, uh, and uh, it is uh, an in independent uh, research institute uh, and think tank uh, in the field of so social uh, sciences. Uh, we have uh, Rino Lombardi, which is the creator of the Bora Museum project, uh, the president of the Bora Museum Association, uh, and uh, is the manager of Magazzino dei Venti, which is the first uh, small museum uh, in the world dedicated to the fascinating theme of the wind. We have Marius uh, Jankowski. He uh, is the director of uh, Investors uh, Assistance Department at uh, Katowice City Hall. Uh, at the Katowice City Hall, he is responsible for attracting uh, new investors and economic uh, promotion, as well as for providing service and cooperation uh, with them. We have Mila Siceva. She, she is a diversification uh, manager at uh, Distrito Digital Comunidad Valenciana uh, and uh, she is in charge of uh, the technical supervision of uh, three innovation programs uh, that uh, they are develop developing uh, as well as a Valencian Inno Innovation Ecosystem Platform uh, which is a uh, di Distrito Digital Comunidad Valenciana is a technological hub uh, promoted by the government of the region of Valencia and they, it's a, an union of nearly 500 companies. It's big enough. <laughs> 
Okay, and I, I, I think uh, I, I presented all the stakeholders, is it right? No. I don't have your uh, bio, probably. Can I? Yeah. Yeah, ah, students, students. okay, yeah. okay. I don't have the bio of a student, so I will ask uh, if you can briefly, briefly introduce uh, yourself. I am Irini Celios. I am student uh, representative from Saarland University. I am head of student council in Saarland University, and I'm a member of the student council from Transform for Europe. I'm um, Danny Meyer, I'm also a representative of Saarland University um, as uh, head of student parliament. I'm also uh, part of uh, the student council for about one year. Mm. I am Elena and I come from the University of Alicante also as a representative of the students and I'm also part of the student council of the Transfer for Europe Alliance. <laughs> Should we say what we study or is it okay? I study international relations. <laughs> um, Thank you. Okay, we, we presented everybody's, I oh, know. It's okay, but, uh, well, my, my name is Theodora and I'm coming from Sophie University. I'm teaching, I'm academic, but I also work in industry and uh, I think I have some other overview of what's, what's going on with practices and how students go to, to work. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. So, um, let's start uh, breaking the ice, uh, talking about uh, past experiences. Uh, we, we, maybe we can learn something uh, from, uh, from past experiences. I will start to, to ask uh, to Fabrizio Rovatti from Area Science Park. Uh, they had a project called the MOVE project. Uh, can you tell us about this? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, so the MOVE project was a project we did some years ago. Actually, it was based in the University of Trieste, no, not in Ares and Spark. And actually, Mr. Carrieri was very involved in that. So <laughs> I'm quite pleased to talk about this today. Because I think it was the first experiment we did at the University of Trieste of trying to help students from the university to get in touch to, with the industries small and medium enterprises abroad in order to do an uh, uh, internship in this company abroad. So um, we, we work a lot on, on that because we, we thought at that time that one of the piece of the puzzle that was missing was really in trying to help the student, yes, to go abroad, to understand better other culture, to study with Erasmus in, in other, Erasmus and not only obviously, in other countries, but was very important for us to give some tools to the students to go abroad and to work inside a company. That was uh, an experiment, we, we did it for three or four years, and then actually it, uh, we s sort of built a sort of office inside the university that helped the people to do that for, for, uh, for, for a while. So that was very interesting, and uh, actually this kind of experiment led us to understand that there was another piece of, of the puzzle that was missing that was uh, entrepreneurship itself. So uh, we saw a lot of people, a lot of students went abroad to work in a company, then some of them stay abroad for a lot, then get back to Italy, some get back to Italy as soon as they can, but start to work inside other companies here in our region or in Italy. But we saw a lot of students that has some innovative ideas and they did not have the tools at that moment to understand if that idea, that innovative idea can be transformed into a company, into a startup. So again, obviously I'm trying about, um, I'm speaking about a process that went well. Obviously there was a lot of trial and error because obviously when you do something new, you try to do something, then you recognize that something is working, something not, you get back and you, you reshape it. But at least what we did is move project for internship abroad and then here we start to 
help the people with some standards, uh, standardized project process to understand how to build an innovative startups. And these are two main uh, topic to deal with when you are talking to students. And actually, when I'm referring to, to the, the, the topic of this workshop, it's really important the student commitment in both cases, actually. Because there is a lot of talking about this topic, but in any case, any students have to know that the main thing to have is the, their commitments in, in, in both fields, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Do you want so, to say? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to take the word at the beginning, but I think I'll tell you three real examples, uh, which are my personal examples. I have a PhD student. I like her very much. Uh, she was working as a uh, communication and PR expert of one of the biggest industry firms in Bulgaria. But she came as a PhD student, and as a PhD student, she went to Ilmenau for six months. Then she worked there for on two projects, and after that, they invited her to be, she's living now in Heidelberg, but they invited her to teach there, and she's teaching in a university, also another university in Germany. So you see that that internship really turns turned into practice. She's very good. She's working also for SAP, for a computer, international computer firm. Uh, so yeah, it started like just an internship on Erasmus, but at the end she ended as a teacher in, in that university. Well, part-time teacher, but anyway. Um, the second thing is, the second example is uh, of my daughter. She's a medical doctor, but she went to, uh, she's not working now for them, but she went for uh, uh, three months, I think, in pra for a practice in France, and she really keeps her connections with, with the hospital. So it started as a practice again, but it turned like a longer um, connection with that, um, institution. And the third is also per, uh, uh, example is also uh, of my PhD student who is uh, working as a recruiter. Now it's very important because you all do your CVs online and you just apply to different um, firms uh, online. And um, he's working for a Swiss firm. And what he's doing, he's really having, uh, he's helping students to prepare their CVs uh, to uh, connect and to apply more and more effectively for uh, foreign f for uh, foreign firms, because uh, I think that the industry now now is very very internationalized, and you apply uh, online, they just talk to you online. And I think it's very important. So uh, students, even uh, during their uh, third or fourth year, are ready to participate and to apply for uh, uh, different jobs. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, is there any other uh, stakeholder that want to tell us uh, some experience uh, is, uh, of the past uh, with the trainership? Uh? I can try. Thank you very much, first of all, for having me here. It's great to have this opportunity to, to meet with, with you. Uh, just now, it's better or no, it's better? Okay. Okay. W one more time. Uh, I'm uh, Mariusz Jankowski from Poland, exactly from Katowice City Hall, and, uh, daily based. Uh, like Julia said, um, I'm responsible for attracting private investments to the city, but <laughs> it's another story. Uh, maybe. I can mention about myself, it's uh, probably a good example uh, for, for our discuss because I am, you know, I'm also um, 
uh, at the university uh, PhD um, student. So I work for the city. Uh, I'm director of uh, of, of uh, investors assistance department. That, but at the same time, um, I try to write my thesis. So uh, this is this is a specific program uh, implementation um, doctorate. It's something like uh, we have to involve uh, involve invol sorry uh, we have to um, find the new solution yeah in our subjects as a students. So for example in my uh, in my case it is a strategy for uh, smart city policy and okay it's uh, i'm fencing uh, the the great uh, challenge because um, i don't have uh, many opportunities to uh, for example to to conduct a part of my study and or maybe better a, a part of my research somewhere abroad is uh, in some institute because it's not so easy to to get some scholarship uh, also in my age because i am not mm, 20 uh, so um, i think it will be nice to to discuss about uh, such kind of opportunities i know that this program is relatively new in Poland and I suppose that also the ministry uh, which has uh, started this program has has uh, started this program I think uh, for four four five years uh, for, for, for four years it's also not good prepared to to help us but I think it will be also great opportunity to on the base of your uh, alliance to establish something like uh, a platform also for PhD uh, students not uh, necessary the, 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 the young uh, people but also for for us uh, who who are trying to, to, to do this research on a little bit different level so it's my uh, small and uh, sensitive request and it will be great to discuss also uh, about this not necessary within this meeting but also for example uh, today evening so thank you for attention thank you there is uh, somebody else that want to to share uh, some experience uh, Okay, thank you. So, um, I don't know if there is any lawyer here, law student or law professor in this room? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I will present maybe um, different um, perspective and uh, I will speak about, um, about legal education, about law students, about um, about our problems, so to say, because, you know, what is um, the situation with uh, law students specifically that we have a lot of, of course, connections with stakeholders. Internship is obligatory um, part of our education and students really, how to say, connect with stakeholders very quickly uh, and, and, um, and um, uh, with, of course, with a purpose to, to, to find uh, their workplaces and so on. But uh, the problem is uh, the following, that still students very much focus to national regulation. And law is still very much focused to, 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 um, to, to national law. So for example, Lithuanian students, they don't know very much about even their neighbors. You know, law of Poland, you know, and uh, law, law of Latvia. And um, so I see very much added value now because, of course, law now becomes more and more international, global uh, phenomenon, you know. And there are a lot of similarities, a lot of, uh, of course, activities, business activities, uh, which are international and so on. So, so I really very much added value in, in making internships abroad. And still very few students in our law faculty attempted. For example, one student went to Sweden for internship, uh, one, I don't know, maybe to France, but still we have to somehow encourage, because even to go for Erasmus for our students is a problem, because they say, why I have to go for Erasmus? Because I, I want to study national law, and if I go to Erasmus, I will miss my studies, so I don't want to go even for, for Erasmus for, 
for, for, for just studies, not internship. So, but I say you have to go because now law have changed and, and uh, I, I also see um, the opportunity here in the alliance to make certain what kind of circulation uh, of internships, if we could manage to do something like that, uh, for possibilities for our students to go to, to, for example, Italy, to go to, to Poland, to go to Germany, and to have internships, or, or your students to go to Lithuania, because we had one, um, we, uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, five years ago, we, 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 we attempted to make uh, to um, like uh, summer schools for American students. So American students came to our law school and they, 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 they've seen most of value exactly going to law firms and having internships here in Lithuania. <laughs> uh, so that's, uh, so it showed for me that it's really what is probably the most important if we do some kind of uh, this exchange and, 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 and going to, um, and maybe even not for studies, it's better to go, but exactly to go for internship for law students to another country, to go to another law firm in, for example, in Italy for Lithuanian students to see how, how it works, uh, what is environment, what is cultural, what are cultural differences even, and so on. So, so that's maybe more reflection. We had certain experiences and from that experience, I see really very big added value in this exactly making internships uh, um, circulation of students in, in intention places in, 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 in the countries of Alliance, for example. Thank you. So uh, um, let's uh, change uh, perspective uh, and uh, talk to some students uh, uh, to understand uh, what, what is for you the value of uh, a trainership in, uh, in a mobility program. Uh, can I pass? Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I think that there are two sides. One, in my opinion, very positive, and one, in my opinion, quite negative. I wanted to connect to the law problem. I would refer to problem as it, um, since you presented it like this, because I really think that it is a problem. It is a problem that especially students who are studying law are very focused on their national law and the language barrier is so ginormous. I don't study law, I study cultural studies. So if I would have to read something that is referred to German law, I wouldn't even understand it and I'm a native speaker. So I imagine that the language barrier is so big to go to Sweden where you don't even speak the language fluently or at all to go and study something like law which requires so much work to get into the topic and to be good at what you are doing and you need to love that really much. But on the other hand, I think that at Saarland University we have found a really good solution for that problem because we have kind of binational uh, studies. For example, we have German and French law where they study both at the same time. So they are requested to go to France and to study law there. It's like you do one year in France, one year in Saarbrücken, and then vice versa. And there are a lot of studies that require this um, open mindset for traveling and for working and for studying abroad. And I think that this is a really good step in the right direction because you are already forced to have the experience in your known like everyday life, you are a student, you go to another university, you study there, so it's n you don't need to be that brave to go and have an internship in that country because you already have kind of experienced how life there is. And I think that this is a really good example how you can like lower these barriers to, uh, yeah, to be brave and uh, go somewhere else because I also have experienced that a lot of people are scared and afraid of leaving their home and going to another country where they aren't fluent in the language. 
And although I think that this is a changing process today and it's getting better and better, it's still a problem because, I mean, when we have meetings at Transform for Europe, we have like from 10 to 20 students who follow us to the cultural weeks or to events, but we are 17,000 students and there are a lot of students who either have the financial problem to accompany us or who are scared, who think that they would miss their practices or lectures and I think that this is a you need, we need to work on having more benefits that weigh more than the fears that the students have. And I think that you already presented really good opportunities how you can help and engage students to see that the fears and the problems that they would face or that they are seeing are weighing less than the experience that they get when they go abroad and do an internship or go and work abroad for a year or something like this. My studies actually are abroad studies. I grew up in Greece and I went there to a German school so I knew the language and I wasn't afraid of that but I'm studying in Germany now since five years and when someone asks me, ah, do you want to go back home when you have finished your studies? Nowadays, I'm thinking about it. When I started my studies, I was, I was like, yes, of course, I would go to Greece directly back. But today, I'm not sure if I would really want to go back home. Maybe I would want to stay or go somewhere else. And that's, I think, a really good process that students learn and go through. Yeah. You or you first? So I um, actually collected some of the opinions of the students that have been involved in some of the mobilities of Transfer for Europe. And one of the things like uh, they kind of uh, um, answer what they found it was an advantage of mobility and then some disadvantages. Some of them, Irene already mentioned them, like uh, language barrier, um, then maybe also financial uh, problems. And one of the things that they also mention is that you're in a new um, environment and you have to face like difficult situations. But at the same time, one of the things that they mention is that that situation is a challenge and actually it can like it helps you to um, uh, gain self-independence on a way so one of some of the things that they mention is for example uh, new perspectives and good practices um, uh, like dynamic learning and not static take like useful skills of different environments and then when talking about professional value they say like it enhances the CV, it works for like networking and uh, one thing that is important I think is that it may lead to future collaboration, job opportunities, partnerships and so on. So I, I think like for them, at least the ones that fuel this for, uh, formulary, this was weighing more than the disadvantage. So also one thing that I, I think it's really true is like the transfer of knowledge and best practices between stakeholders and students. Like bring fresh perspectives from the students as in like in any internship, but in this case also like the national perspective of, no, like I don't know if I go, I actually did an internship in Italy. And when discussing with um, the boss, I was like, ah, it's interesting. In Spain, they will do it like this. Oh, no, we do it like this here. But it's actually interesting when you're mentioning like kind of this um, like transfer. And then regarding the thing with law, because I don't study law, but I study international relations. So I have like, it depends on the faculty of law. And I, my um, curricula, it's already focused on like, international relations like they expect you to go abroad and still I had like many problems with my learning agreement but because they were like I had one that was like uh, foreign policy and diplomacy and I was like oh look because in I went to France and they was like oh there's one that is exactly that and they were like no but it's foreign policy of Spain and diplomacy of Spain so you cannot take it and I was like okay and for me I could deal with it like because I had other subjects but I know friends of mine that were just doing law that they couldn't go abroad because they had many subjects that were like focused on Spanish law and I, I think it's, in, like, it's important to know about your national law but it's also important to as she mentioned like to for example the, the thing of France like to know 
what systems they have in other places because I think there's constitutional law that sometimes you do like a difference between the, the laws but it's not so relevant like I don't it's in the first year and it's like really uh, look it's different but for example I don't know anything about Lithuanian law or like Scandinavian law I just know a little bit about the system in Germany that is different to the Spanish one and the English system but <laughs> yes, it's true, and in the end, it's like Europe, so you need to know the basis. Yes, sure. So, so yeah, a little bit jumping to to, to what you are speaking. So, um, I, I, I served as a dean for five years of the law. Yeah, I served. Uh, I, I served as a dean of law faculty for five years, and at, I remember at the beginning of of. Uh, of my working as a dean, um, we, we solved the, the following question, how to prepare our students as international lawyers, what we should do to prepare them as more international, not more local lawyers, but international, what we have to do. So we, we visited um, the major law companies in, in the country and asked uh, lawyers, attorneys, so what you expect from, from the lawyer, especially as a matter of the, those linguistic um, um, uh, abilities, because you speak about language barrier, so, um, so what we ask them, maybe we should now teach them Chinese, you know, because of importance of China in business, you know, and, and lawyers uh, um, uh, communicating with them and so on. So what they answered is no, they just have to, to polish English, to, to polish, to, to learn English to the perfection. Because even when, for, for example, they, they, I still remember they told that even when we go to, for example, to France, I'm sorry for French colleagues, but um, then they, they, when we start to communicate with our French colleagues, they immediately jump to English and communicate in English, you know, and solve all problems in English. So e English become lingua franca of our world. And um, also they told that uh, lawyers, for example, the Lithuanian lawyers, they are not competitive exactly because of that international environment. For example, if they want to solve cases in uh, Stockholm arbitrage, in, London arbitrage, they miss cases or they are not hired as lawyers because they still not handle English uh, well enough. So, so I think we have to overcome language barriers by, by, by knowing English, so to say, very well and, and, that, that's, and, then, and then go to other countries and, 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 uh, and, and share our experiences. I'm sorry, I'll be short. Uh, if I can answer your concerns, I would think that many of the firms now are very international. I'll tell you, last year, uh, we the the German uh, Chamber of Commerce they asked for students, and of course with German, uh, and two people they took two people from Germany for. Uh, three months practice or something like that. So there are very inter a lot of international firms uh, who work. Uh, don't be afraid to go on the first stage. Then after that, because you, you do everything if they take you for internship. But it doesn't matter. You learn a lot of things about the country, about how institutions work. I mean, just sometimes you maybe try to go to a higher position. But anyway, just have two or three months starting from the beginning. And I think something is very important. I don't know whether you realize it. If you're in a foreign country, you learn how to manage situation. You learn how to communicate with other people, with other psychology, which is very important. And yeah, law is domestic. Many Things, but for example, IT firms now, they're not domestic. They're, most of them are international and not only, and for example, if you're, if you're an accountant, then you have to work, you, you have certain standards in education in our programs there. I know it's difficult and if you go, for example, for a 
semester in other country, we do not recognize all your exams, but that's not, I mean, you'll just do it. But if you're an accountant, you have to be an accountant in France, in Italy, in Bulgaria. So, well, there is national domestic differences, but or constitutional law is more or less the same everywhere. It's, yeah, I mean, the basis, are, so don't be afraid to go somewhere. Uh, try to, to apply for a different, uh, let's say, a month practice somewhere in a foreign, it won't, be, it won't everything, I know it won't be, uh, for example, sometimes they'll refuse, sometimes they'll send you a letter and say, oh no, come some other time, but don't be afraid to apply. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, there, do you want to intervene? No, it's actually covered everything I wanted to add, so maybe I'm uh, going to say something uh, to the next uh, question. Or, um, yeah, I think um, it's. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's uh, true that uh, it doesn't matter uh, about constitutional uh, law. Maybe uh, the colleague from Lithuania agrees, but um, sticking to some kind of common standards uh, is pretty important. Uh, although incorporating um, some tasks in uh, in studies um, that are necessary, that are maybe uh, not only at one university at our um, in our alliance. Um, but um, a multi uh, multinational um, approach to it because I think it would be um, a quite successful idea uh, to move a bit more uh, closer uh, in a way uh, and have a yeah closer cooperation um, in in a way to uh, help students uh, go abroad and widen perspective and um, think about um, maybe I don't only want to uh, study Lithuanian uh, law and go to France and uh, say okay let's let's look what's gonna happen um, because it it you you can't lose anything um, by uh, yeah getting new uh, experiences um, you you can only uh, gain uh, a, a wider perspective I guess and uh, therefore we we should incorporate more uh, transnational points in a way uh, I don't know how to say more transnational uh, aspects in our uh, alliance um, I think it's uh, it's a matter of uh, of the teaching uh, cooperation it's not a not a student uh, issue uh, that much uh, but it uh, in in this way uh, we students uh, maybe benefit the most um, from a uh, increased cooperation Um, thanks a lot um, for for the floor. Uh, I think I'm fully agree with you uh, both of of the sides, uh, and I think it's a good point or key point that uh, you have split this two different, I think. Um, subjects i mean uh, the exchange of uh, students in uh, within the student exchange program uh, within the the study uh, or during the study and uh, for me something different is internship in abroad when we are for example phd uh, a student Th this is uh, i think something uh, two two different things so when okay i was also erasmus student in germany very beautiful time in my life so uh, I, and i could remember that it it was like you said it was something like a um, experience how to manage the different uh, uh, or many many of uh, challenges in the different countries something like this and i had to manage of the situation so uh, but maybe the the study the subjects um, okay uh, um, different language foreign language okay they they were um, disadvantages or maybe uh, challenges but it it wasn't maybe the the most important thing in this experience yeah so when we when we are finished with our study we are expert in our subject and uh, probably uh, mm, we are 
better uh, prepared to go abroad to do internship in our subject in English or maybe in this uh, language uh, in this country, for example, in Germany, uh, in German. So it, it could be easier, I think, uh, for us. And um, from my perspective, from my point of view, it will be better to discuss these two, uh, I don't know, maybe educational paths yeah, in different way. So uh, something, uh, something else is to, to go abroad as a student during the, the my study, during my study, yeah, to get these experiences. And something else is um, apply for a internship opportunity in such kind of institution or institute, research institute or some, I don't know, unit at the university as PhD student. So uh, I suggest to, to discuss about this in different ways. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so let, let's change uh, again uh, perspective. Uh, I would ask uh, to stakeholders, uh, uh, what is the value of mobility for you, for, uh, for, your, uh, for your firm or for your uh, institution? Uh, uh, what are you searching? What are you looking for uh, in uh, a, a, a candidate to, to trainership? Um, okay, Th thanks uh, for the question. I was waiting for this uh, next question because I'm coming from this corporate company's parts because this is one that I know more. And I was lacking this third view about we have the institution, educational part, we have the students, and also there's a private part, which it's very important in this issue. And um, from my point of view, uh, what they look for in the, in, the, in the students and the people that will work for them by a short or longer time, it's to erase this kind of uncertainty that they face when they um, get in touch for the first or second time with the students. Because, uh, okay, it's really different to, um, to make a contract with the students that are from the university next to you because you, it's flexible it could not fit it happens and it's it's okay but when you bring somebody from the other parts it's like really it's it's not close it, it has to look for accommodation it look it has many costs for the company and also for the student and you you get in trouble if it doesn't fit in the company. So this is the uncertainty that we might look for how to face it and how to like not erase it but maybe make it lower and for the student as well I, I understand your part because where you where, where am i going what will i do maybe i'm not fitting in there it's not what i want to do it could f it, ha it could happen but also for the company and the company uh, it's looking for somebody he can trust so how can we do that maybe with um from the first years of study, maybe already looking for this company, not in the last year of study, okay, where I'm going? What are the companies out there? And just applying for all the, all the offers, are, are they outside? So maybe planificating it from like earlier stages of students and for the companies as well, we can, look, uh, we can uh, find better matches for both of them. And also about the, like, the terms, their, their internships are like three months, six months, but companies normally look for, normally, they are kind of all kind of companies, so sure, but normally look for something like it's durable, maybe one year or something like that, because you have to teach this person, it has, it has to start working and has to like bring also something of value to this company. and begin to uh, be a part of it and another advantage of this student for the company which is big it's this international part for example in spain there are a lot of companies that like force the people to speak english but still it's not enough because there's always difficult part when you bring a uh, people from other countries you force a little bit more to your own workers to collaborate these new people and to and to force them to speak English as well. So the lack of English is not always uh, this problem. 
So when the foreign student speaks good, spe good English, it's good for the company to bring it. It's an advantage. So we can uh, use it. And of course, it's different from uh, fields. If you talk with, uh, about the cultural and uh, law fields, and when you talk about IT, it's like really different. And the requests from the companies are so so different. So maybe we can like split it into fields and see what we can do. But first of all, for sure, we have to see and ask, identify maybe the companies and ask who of them are ready to um, engage in this and not to be always the same companies that are like, okay, we open, open this offer, we exploit this person three, six months with the easy job that he can do, he can do and the next one. This is not the purpose of the exchange programs we, we're doing, I think. I am Georgia. I work at ISIG, uh, the Institute of, of International Sociology of Gorizia. And as the name says, we, we, you should guess that we work mainly on sociology field. It's wrong, actually, because we work uh, on many things. And the point is that I think the, uh, one of the main things the institute, research institute, search in this moment are the ability, the skills to be multidisciplinary. For example, as an uh, institute, we are working from topics from uh, international um, artificial intelligence to civil protection plan for uh, um, uh, for disaster and risk management to um, many other field as, uh, for example, Go 2025, the, uh, the European Capital of Culture in 2025 for Nova Gorica and for uh, for Gorizia. So, and actually, uh, I'm almost 30 years old. I graduated uh, just before the pandemic, so maybe it was my fault. I don't know, but okay. Uh, but what I'm, I want to, to say to the students that are approaching to the graduation and with big question marks what I'm going to do, I think it's uh, one of the main skills you should have, and this is one of the things that actually can improve an exchange mobility program as this is that, that you must be capable and able uh, to switch all the time because it's difficult to find nowadays something that, uh, I don't know, working on uh, the same field, on the same topic all the time, it's most Im impossible uh, in these days. So, um, yeah, and, and this is one of the, the, the example I wanted to bring with the, uh, the example of the institute where I work in. I have also by myself a curricula of international uh, relation at the University of Trieste, but actually I don't do international <laughs> relations. Uh, and uh, one of the m most beautiful things of my job that is at, in the morning I should work on, inter, uh, on ethics and uh, ethics topics about artificial intelligence. In the afternoon I could work on a cultural project and in the day after I can work, I don't know, on civil protection plan for a municipality like the city of Torino. So you have the ability to switch all the time and this is one of the most difficult, I think, actually uh, things, but one of the mm, skills that enrich you most. Um, thank you. <laughs> Just um, like linking to everything that has been said, because I, for example, I think it's really valuable when you do an internship, what you say, like uh, the transfer of knowledge in like um, field. Like um, I think, I don't know how to explain it, but like when you move somewhere else, you can learn so much of how, like what is being done in that field in that other country or that other company. And at the same time, I think you are so like, right? Like I was also doing my internship and it's true, like you need to adapt to different things. Like, uh, of course, I think there are maybe some places that can be more specialized, but in general, um, I think you have to adapt. And then link with what you mentioned of like uh, looking for an internship in advance. I did that, but at the same time, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be given the opportunity for when the time came. So it's true that sometimes we 
uh, wait for the last minute, but we also look for opportunities. Like, I, especially when concerning going abroad, like you go, uh, I know there's this scholarship, I think Aitana scholarship to go somewhere else in, in the European Union. And uh, like you get, like for example, right now, uh, I think they put the notification like in June, July, and then you have to uh, do all the process and then you start in October. Like you don't have almost time or you don't know what options are there. So many times you just, you say, okay, this more or less fits my profile in, in a place that I like. And maybe we don't put so much effort in like, okay, is this the place I want to go? But at the same time, it's like, okay, it's on a scholarship. It's giving me the opportunity to go, so I take it. But like I don't know if I could like my point, but like of course uh, it would be nice if we could uh, decide it ourselves. But we don't know if when we need that opportunity, then they are looking for an intern or not. Because that was a little bit my case. I was lucky, but I it, I could have not been lucky. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, do you want to say something? I for me, a word, an important word was switch, you said before, huh? so multidisciplinary. So we are a very small museum, so it's a curious institution, a very strange. But what we need is because the wind is something that is concrete, really. It's something invisible, but concrete. So we, for example, we need experiences could, which could be culture and science, hmm? but also another comp another part could, for me could be interesting is, uh, for example, problem solving. Hmm? So, Because uh, sometimes uh, uh, we, we receive a lot of, uh, for example, uh, CV, hmm? but always this, the same kind of CV. So without knowing what is uh, the, the, we can say company, but it's not the company. So sometimes could be uh, to have an idea of who is the, the other, and, uh, and for for us, I, I maybe I make confusion now because I used I used to do this. But for me, is uh, important uh, this aspect um, of interdisciplinarity and so a very uh, elastic uh, preparation to different. So elastic is uh, in, the, in the arguments, in the language, in the situations to to try to to resolve problems or uh, to to answer to things. Hmm? Very light. Moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How would you do, do? Like, how would you know that just for the CV? Like, how would you get that information from the CV if you don't get to know this person? No, the person must know what uh, the person must know what is the place. No, uh, must be curious to know to understand what is the place. I, I is another argument. I am a small publisher too, eh? and. Uh, is a small publisher. Everyone send me everyone. A lot of people send me books. Yeah? So this is the book of my, my life. But you have to know w w what are the books that the publisher publish. Yeah? It's not something that you send uh, uh, 360 degree everyone. You have to be focused. I think. Hmm? So I think that is something that must uh, could be important. Hmm? I answer maybe later. Yes. For you. I wanted to say that I think this is a really good match because my opinion and I also experience that young people are looking for versatile jobs. Nowadays people don't want to wake up in the morning at six o'clock, go to the office and do the same thing eight hours and then leave and go home and sleep and repeat. This is not what young people are looking for in their jobs nowadays. It's They are like, if I need to have a job like this, then I don't want to work at all, or I don't uh, want to work full time, or this is not what I am looking for my life to do the next 40 years. And also young people nowadays don't have the urge to do the same thing like my grandparents did. Like my grandparents had, I don't know, they worked 50 years, every day the same thing, every hour the same thing. My, my grandparents were like working in, a, in the industry and my grandfather was mm, building like something inside the motor of a car. And for 50 years he did the same thing every day over and over and over again and it was the same machine it was the, the same colleagues and the same process every day and this is a good 
changement that we have experienced that people nowadays don't want that. They don't want to do the same thing. And this is exactly, I think, where we have the perfect match because nowadays this is also not asked anymore. People need to be adjustable and versatile and they need to be open to work on one project in the morning and on another in the afternoon. And I think that this is exactly that what young people our age want. They don't want to do the same thing. And they want to be versatile and they want to work interdisciplinary. They want to have the, the challenge and the changement in their jobs and in their everyday life. And I think that this is a really good changement and um, how do we say it? Wicklung in English? Development. 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 I was lacking this one word. Yeah, it's a really good development, I think, that we have reached a point where the needs of companies and the wishes of students or in general young people who are going f for full-time working do match this perfectly. You're right. Yeah. You're right and we should discuss about how to create the, the platform to to enable yeah this kind of job in different European countries it will be it will be great there there is a great challenge because oh, many things yeah but uh, definitely I uh, I work also with young people at the uni or also in my work in the city hall we have something like a uh, municipal business incubator and uh, in this uh, um, in this organization in this building and uh, with my team we organize um, you know the special competition for uh, young entrepreneurs such as startups yeah called uh, startup mine uh, and uh, exactly this these are the expectations of the young generation yeah they they want to experience the world they want to go abroad but of course without money without uh, foreign languages uh, without uh, uh, stability in in for example in Germany in my way or in Spain for example it's not so easy and I think the the people as uh, we are sitting here we have to discuss about uh, about the creation of opportunities for for this movement and commitment of students sorry oh okay yeah i really uh wanted to to hear me yes okay uh so uh Thank you for uh, what you just said. Uh, I really uh, wanted to um, uh, kind of voice the same opinion uh, because um, it's probably quite different uh, when it comes to private companies uh, and public organizations. I come from uh, a public organization, which is like the big old art museum in my country, uh, Estonia. And I, uh, I also... Um, I think about how we, we can offer, you know, um, a workspace where young people want to come. And I think we have to uh, really find ways to uh, develop uh, in, in, in all of these uh, markers that have been mentioned, like to be more flexible, to be more um, mobile. Uh, because uh, in my museum, people come um, they come in uh, uh, after they have uh, graduated their they come in maybe uh, as bachelor students and then they stay for you know 15 20 years um, working in the same departments and as I can hear you this is not what you want anymore right and I, I think we we really have to kind of um, figure out how to how to change the system in, in that sense uh, and it's probably quite different yeah in 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 um, you know private companies uh, which are more I don't know uh, ready uh, ready to change um, but in my institution it's definitely a challenge that the young generation is kind of um, uh, posing us exactly the same in Poland for example uh, one one example uh, uh, maybe a, f a couple of months ago, we organized small meeting for a um, group of students from um, from the university in my uh, in my city. Uh, it was uh, international group. Yeah, we 
uh, we talked about uh, our duties, everything uh, in this municipal incubator. And after that, one student from US said, okay, I would like to apply for a job here. Uh, or maybe internship, you know, it was impossible we, because uh, we, we don't have uh, such kind of procedures to, hi uh, to hire uh, him in, in, my, in my unit in uh, the city hall. It's impossible. For example, also people from Ukraine, it's also, uh, they, uh, many, uh, many of them speak uh, very well Polish uh, because they study at our universities and so on. But uh, as a public institution, as a public uh, uh, entity, um, self-government, but it's the same in the different uh, entities in public sector in Poland, we are not able to, to hire them because of, I don't know, it's not exactly the, the, the language barrier, it's not exactly the, you know, it's low, it's low, it's the rules, it's, uh, yeah, it, I think is it, uh, is it the, the, mm, the most of uh, important problem. And just to add you, uh, what you're saying, we are also a public organization. We're like the regional organi public organization that um, helps private companies to develop themselves in our region. And s as public organization, we cannot do uh, this kind of things. So we cannot directly help the new and young talent and we cannot integrate them all, all, all that we want in our organization. But what we do or try to do instead is facilitate. So uh, what can you do right now? Facilitate this connection to the private companies and the same in your case. Maybe there are like companies around uh, the, your organization that are able to be flexible enough for the young people and somehow uh, these in, in this way to be closer to them and little by little uh, change the whole system but it's so complicated we're like tightened in this and uh, all the problems are nearly the same and i just wanted to to, to add to to all this discussion that uh, what is stakeholder stakeholder are parts in something that give something and receive instead and as long as they receive more that than they give they are participating in this so let let's be honest all all type of stakeholders we are here what we are uh, able to give we want to give and what we want to receive and how we receive it for example uh, the young people are looking for this flexibility challenges uh, like traveling a lot, what what are they giving us instead? And so we have to put it on the table and say, we are these people, we give this kind of uh, uh, knowledge to companies and make it valuable. So in, I think this way we, can, we will be able to make this trade and keep the ecosystem working and keep it alive. It's like a river, it flows, it's not like um, a lago. Como dices un lago? It's not a lake, it should be a river, it should flow and it's changing a lot, okay? Yeah, thank you. I, I think you, 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 I agree on most of the things that has been said, but just to, point it out, just to point it out that from a public body perspective, when, when anyone design a policy to help students go abroad, do an internship, uh, help them in their study, help a PhD go abroad, and, or help a company to attract people in order to do. We are all stakeholders, so we must uh, create a win-win situation. Actually, I must say win-win-win situation. We are talking about students, we are talking about private companies, we are talking about public companies that are designed. So, the, the, the public bodies must uh, give equal opportunity to all the students to go abroad and to do their experience abroad. We must overcome the, 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 the obstacle, the problems that the students are facing, obviously. So w I think that any country has put in, in place some, Europe and any country has put in place some aids for the people to go and tools for the people, for helping the people to go abroad. Actually, I'm, we must be very, very careful, careful, in my opinion, uh, that there must be an element of challenge in what we are doing. So we, we must not raise the challenge side. Because if the 
public organization give you all, there is not, not anymore any challenge. So you are learning less if you are not facing any challenge when you, when you go abroad. But again, if you are going to a private companies and you as a young people, you don't want to do the same thing day by day, each hour, hour by hour, okay. I understand, I mean, in the last 10 years I've been working with startups, so I can understand the younger entrepreneur that want to do something new, something different, organizing his company in a completely different way than the others. But if, for example, if you are doing an internship in a big international private company, it's difficult for you to change anything inside that company. So again, you must adapt, you must understand what's going on inside, learn what's the trick and what's the process inside in order for you to understand how to create new process wherever you, you go after that. So again, it's a balance be, mm, between what you're learning and what you're giving at that moment. So anyone design a process like this must be very careful to understand what's the winning point for the students, so what they get back from their experience, what the winning point for the public institution that put in place the tools to help the students to go abroad and to help the private companies to extract value from the people that are going down. For example, I totally agree, the private companies for uh, people that do an internship of three months, it cannot, that company cannot give a serious task to that people because it, it's too much to, to, to teach to those people for three months. So the, the students will learn very little. Instead, if the people go abroad for a l longer period, then he get more. Again, win-win situation and trying to understand the crucial point and the need of everyone. Thank you. Yes, I want to, to link my, my brief speech with uh, some things that are arised uh, during this, um, this workshop. Ah, sorry. So first of all, um, I wanted to say something about the um, students' fear when moving abroad. <laughs> uh, I know I can understand because I did my Erasmus <coughs> more or less 20 years ago <laughs> because I'm not uh, 20 anymore. And yes, there are, um, you have to have at least, at least some fear when doing something new. Uh, it's that's the, the beautiful thing. If you already know um, what to do and what things will be and you all already know all, it's not challenging. So. But on the other hand, nowadays, uh, since I work, for example, uh, in a welcome office and I welcome foreign students and researchers coming to this region, uh, I can say that nowadays a student or a researcher have a lot of uh, services and a lot of tools um, to move uh, in a foreign country without let's say the main problems, we cannot solve any problem, uh, but we can help uh, people uh, moving abroad uh, uh, smoothly. So um, you, have, you have just to plan uh, um, as um, well in advance, I would say, uh, or uh, um, not at the last minute, your, uh, your, your travel. Uh, if, you do, if you do this, you will also enjoy more the, the mobility experience. Um, another thing I would say that um, according to me nowadays employers also, maybe not the ones in uh, small companies, but the ones in the medium or big companies uh, give value to a candidate who did an experience abroad. Because this means that uh, uh, he or she wants to, um, or, or he, she is able to move from, let's say, your comfort zone, and she or he is more flexible uh, to live in another country, um, to face other uh, cultural aspects. Uh, and this is, um, according to me nowadays, it's an added value if you put this experience in your CV. Uh, even if you do a volunteer experience, for example, I did also volunteer experience in, the, in, uh, in a foreign country, and it is, th these kind of experience are the ones that uh, um, 
give you more in terms of, for example, soft skills, because you learn how to work uh, with other people, uh, not of your national country, and you learn uh, um, how to solve problems you never faced before. Um, so let's say that the university will provide you the, let's say, uh, hard skills, the mobility experience for as, um, as Erasmus or as a trainship uh, or as also a holiday <laughs> uh, could provide you with a lot of, uh, let's say, the, the, the soft skills. And uh, nowadays soft skills are, uh, are even more, more important. Um, I know that you are younger, <laughs> so you are still students, but I want just to mention that um, in Area Science Park, uh, as also um, the Euraxis Center, Euraxis is an initiative dedicated to, um, to researchers, uh, and it's um, promoted by the European con con Community to uh, Commission, sorry, to uh, promote also and to help the, mo the researchers' mobility, not only in Europe, but, but also um, in the world. And uh, if, you, if you will go in the, Eura in the Euraxis website, you will find also um, a section dedicated to the career development, because the, the same problem you are facing now, so bridging the gap between stakeholders and students, the same problem um, exists also for researchers uh, when bridging the gap from uh, the academia uh, world and the industry world. And the Eraxis platform provides researchers with a lot of tools, for example, webinars uh, and uh, on how to write uh, a CV, um, how to learn, uh, let's say, soft skills, and uh, how to plan your career uh, development. How also, how to better know yourself by making a self-assessment on Mm, what uh, are my competencies and uh, what I want really mm, do in the future. Uh, and so there are a lot of tools that uh, can help um, researchers, but I advise you to take a look also at this website. I will uh, leave the, maybe the links to, the, uh, to Julia. <laughs> um, and there are a lo also a lot of uh, online tools you can take a look uh, because the topics are the same, students and companies, researchers with the uh, academia and industry world. So it's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay, there is somebody from the public that want to intervene. Yes, <laughs> thanks a lot. Okay, I'll just briefly introduce myself. I am Tulia Catalan. I am academic here at the Department of Humanities. Uh, I'm one of the staff of the project here and the responsible also for T4 Eri of the part dedicated to these, uh, these, uh, these topics. I think we have to put on the table also the risks sometimes. We didn't speak about risk. And I think that uh, we have a big risk under, under our tables, that is uh, exploitation of the students uh, in these processes. I hear that I listen to you very carefully. I learned a lot from the students' questions, but uh, no one uh, has uh, faced with the big question that is uh, what happened to a student, to a PhD student, for instance, in the moment in which he do is uh, one year, for instance, and I'm speaking from my perspective, I, ha I have now a PhD students in critical heritage that uh, is, um, she's, uh, she's an architect, I am an historian, and so we have a multidisciplinary uh, PhD, and uh, um, she's uh, dealing with uh, uh, the, uh, the heritage, the material Real heritage of the, the, um, the Cold War. She's an architect, so this study of architecture, so speaking about private stakeholders, gave us money, you know, to cover part of the PhD uh, money, and they exploited completely this person. We have to intervene with them because they let her no time, no time to work about the project. The same happened also with other 
PhD students uh, last year in our university, so I think uh, we have to be uh, very, very careful when we deal, uh, when we make some uh, dealing we, 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 uh, with uh, uh, private uh, companies. I'm not speaking about Area Science Park, of course, but with professional studios, also law studios, for instance, uh, there is always a big risk, uh, exploitation of people. And I think that a university uh, cannot afford uh, this risk. In the sense that uh, we have uh, to give to our students uh, the, the tools, of course, uh, the, 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 the opportunities, uh, but also is our, one of our commitment is uh, to, uh, to, 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 to make all these uh, uh, things uh, uh, carefully controlled in the sense that uh, each uh, relationship has to be texted by our offices uh, and so on and so on. So, if we, when we have uh, my students, for instance, uh, I teach also public history, so how to prepare young people to work in the museums, for instance. And in that case, when I send them to our museums, we always be very careful. What are they doing in that museum? I don't want my students to make photocopy, you understand? Or just to say, just guards, you know? Covering, no, because we have to say. This is our system, our international capitalistic system, I mean historian. And so we have to manage with it and to let students uh, work in a, in a place where they receive tools, where they receive knowledge. We give them to them, but we have always to be careful. And then another question, what can we do like our alliance of seven university now, in the future we hope 10 university. How can we deal with this? Because we have different systems in each of our country. We are, mm, uh, uh, our system were, uh, are coming from two different parts of the world. We have East Europe and West Europe, and we have to face this because our traditions, also labor rights are different. And when we speak about uh, finding jobs uh, of, to our students, specialization jobs, I mean, uh, in order to improve themselves, we have really to speak before how to deal with all of it. I, I don't believe in a free society where we do everything and where from one side one country exploits students, for instance, and the other one pays the students for do the stage for it for example. So I think we have to, to uh, combine our experiences and I think this will be the big challenge of the future of our project. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I want just to uh, add um, in one way my, what I'm, I'm going to say is linked to what uh, um, Tullia Catalas, Catalan just said. So we have to, the idea and the approach of the, inter, the student, international student internship must to be that the center of the university as a mediator between students and stakeholders. And the the alliance of Transform for Europe, so the 10 university, must to be at the center of this experience. Okay, so this is why we organize this workshop during the Transform for Europe week, because we want to put the alliance facing of the risk that uh, Tulia Catalan um, just uh, said. And uh, probably one um, uh, good policy will be like to uh, select uh, the stakeholders uh, within uh, the, the alliance. So the stakeholders, they already work with the university in one way and probably to also write uh, some rules, some policy that we have to 
put in place and um, when you I remember when I did the the, the experience in um, from the University of Trieste to uh, stakeholders in France, I remember that I signed a contract and also the university and the, um, the Erdizu signed uh, this uh, agreement with the stakeholders. So when you have uh, some uh, clear and in, so, in some, some, some way also strict rules, could be like uh, uh, helping, but the risk still. Okay, but the idea is to put the 10 universities in the alliance at the center of this process. This is the idea. And for this, we have to ask uh, which uh, stakeholder is uh, with us, because some stakeholders probably are not uh, interested uh, in to be engaged in this process. So this is one point. The second one is a question. How is the value for you stakeholders, the value added when a student came back. So the student from Trieste is going to uh, Alicante for a period of internship in some stakeholders there, and then he came back. So how you value this experience of internship? Because going overseas is nice, it's beautiful. I did many times, I will, I hope I will do it again. <laughs> but how is the value when you come back? Yeah, I learned Spanish. And now I'm fluent in Spanish. Okay, good. I'm, I'm fluent in German or in Polish or in, in English. Okay, but why, what is the value? How you stay called the value this experience for the students? It's not only a line in the, in the curriculum. It must to be something else. Thank you. So, there are other questions from the public? No, okay. Any, yeah. So, it's important to, to write a manifesto eh, with some the points, very important. So, what is fundamental? Eh? For example, I can say we are all European. That is something that is important. So, we are not of the university of there or there. So, we are Euro European. I like to say this, for example, because uh, I have interactions with a lot of visitors and I talk, I like to, to talk and we are in the same country. So we are lucky to live in Europe now. Could be more lucky if something didn't happen last year, but it's important to, we live in this, uh, in this place uh, and we have uh, the same culture. So, so for me, this, impo this is important. So the manifesto could have not so much, not so much bullet point, but uh, could be five, could be something that could be important. So the importance of people, the importance of human, uh, and so other uh, is the beginning. I'm not so, but we have law too, that can help, but law and creativity could help, and, and uh, sensi sensi sensitivity. And, uh, and the other uh, is for me, when someone come back, uh, is that we, he can, or she can, Enlarge the horizons. So it's not only the language, but is uh, when when you have a young person, is a person that gives you something more. So in a place where you work, in other places, so you have a person that gives you something more. So you, we, for our for our, uh, our life, we learn. And so when there is someone that gives give us something new, is important for me. Is something like that. I, I go, I give this. Yeah, but, uh, but I think that would also require, um, how to say, certain effort also from university side, what especially what, uh, what concerns the program management and program structuring, because I don't know, do you know any programs which have one year internship as integral part of the program? Bachelor program, especially. We don't have. Well, for example, in law studies, we have uh, the part uh, internship is for three months. And you said that you want more. It's better to have, for example, one year. Four. So, but that's, you know, the internships are integral parts of the program. For, for lawyers, it's, we, we give credits. 
and it's three months. We actually thought about at, at one point, for example, to make bachelor program, because bachelor programs is for four years, and one year to devote for internship only, one year. But it still failed. So still programs are more focused, uh, the problem is that still programs are more fo focused to theoretical education. Uh, so we have to, if it is possible, in alliance, do something, maybe rectors when they meet, or vice rectors, what we can do about enlarging this intention, practical part in, in our programs. How, how to do that, is it possible? Having in mind all differences of regulation in the countries, you know, and so on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I will try to answer, give some hints on both topics Alessandro asked us. Uh, exploitation of the student, I think it's, it's a risk, definitely. Uh, actually, I think we must accept the risk, but we must manage the risk very well. We cannot say uh, we are not sending any students anywhere. We must accept the risk, that, but trying to manage as well as we can. Uh, actually, it happens to all the students that go to work in a private company or wherever, actually. But actually, it, it can happen to any one of us in our everyday life. So it's a risk that we, we must be aware of. And we must, at least, again, when we design the policy in order to help students go and do this kind of experience, we must try to, to put in place some tools to help preventing this type of things and if this will not succeed in preventing we must act very fast at that point so again when we were at, at the beginning we uh, the only way we had to try to to um, to stop this was sign an agreement a sort of manifesto before sending the student in order to say okay the student has this kind of skills, we want you to get in touch with this student to work on this. So we tried, we succeeded mostly of the, most of the time, not all the times actually, but it was quite fair at, at the end of our, our process. Obviously it's not the only way we can do that. I think there is many ways in order to try to, to, to avoid this, for sure. Uh, the second thing, what can we have back from the student coming back from abro abroad? Oh, that's the bigger question. I, I think that if we are here, we understand why it's so good to go abroad, to stay abroad, or to come back. So I think that in, in this room, it's quite difficult to say why we are doing that, because we know why. Uh, I must say, from my point of view, seeing the, the, the companies that are accepting people coming back or from research bodies that are asking people to come back to do research and to work here or wherever to get back people from abroad is that uh, we usually speak about uh, T-shaped people. So people with a, a strong experience, vertical experience in one field, it could be law, it could be life science, sociology, or whatever you want, and uh, strong horizontal skills. I think that the, the experience abroad can be seen as enhancing both of the dimension. Actually, now they are speaking about P-shaped, so P-greco-shaped uh, people. So you're actually adding some more vertical and enlarging the, the, the horizontal skill. That's what we, are, we must try to focus. And actually, all the people that are coming back should uh, not only write a, a, a line in their CV, because it's, okay, any one of us did. I, I went there, I do this, okay. But I think it's when you do some colloquia, I think it's really nice to try to exploit what you or really learn from your experience in order for the other people to understand how can you be useful for them. That, that's the idea. Can I be? Try to be very short. Uh, Alessandro, if you find a way to force either private or uh, any company 
to put more value or to raise the salary of a person, it would be it, you'll be really genius. I mean, you cannot force anyone to if 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 a person comes with a higher qualifications. I don't know. There is no way. But what I think is that uh, young people, we, but young people are really in a very a big competition. I know you want to switch. I want to, to, I really believe in startups, I told you, but you have to be really good to sell yourselves at this very big competition. And that's one of the way you may try to become better and better. Uh, what I think that we could do as, as alliance is to try, I don't know, you said several times, platform or uh, any policies just and give you information to, to give you opportunities to, to try to, to go and to, to use those opportunities to become better. Um, Yes, you're right. Uh, maybe the the place of the university is can be to to uh, be somewhere in the middle to see the conditions, but those risks cannot be cannot be really just you have to manage them, but they, you cannot just throw them away or just say no, no, no. The young people are not going to the to go there. Well. Um, I've also worked with private companies and also in administrations. Well, businessmen, well, business is business and they're trying to use you. That's right. But yeah, we may try to, to, to see the risk and to, to manage it. And it's absolutely right. Business has no time to teach you. They, they really want, well, they may teach you a bit, but they don't have the time for a year just to teach you for a short time. That's a big effort. But anyway, I think we can we can try to find some policies to, to see the opportunities we could give in the Alliance for uh, young people to go abroad, to find, I mean, the university is in contact with big firms, I tell you, it's international. So I think we could try to see the opportunities. And actually, you're right. That what that's what brought brought us here. Thank you. Thank you. Say one more question the Yeah. So I want just to say that stakeholders are private, business, also public, also cultural. So for example, a museum. Is a stakeholder. Want to teach you. Yes, that's right. Uh, so, this is like we have also to take in consideration that the stakeholders are completely different. There are like a, spe a big spectrum of this. I just. That's, that's right. <coughs> you can find a way to force them just to give them more money or uh, to the people who are less. No. That's. No. I just wanted to say something on how the alliance can enhance this and I think that we are doing very well in already working on this because I think that just by having the alliance exist we already did such a big step in the right direction because just by having the the networking just by me meeting another student for example Elena from Alicante and she telling me about any experience she had in Alicante might be convincing me to go to Alicante for an internship or just even like for a week for a for a cultural week and I think that this is exactly the transformation that we need that we are already having and already achieving and yes of course we can enhance it and we need to um, force more and, and support more connection and more networking between students and stakeholders and students between students and stakeholders between stakeholders because something I think that is even more important than students meeting stakeholders for internships is connecting researchers. That's what we were discussing at Saarland University um, for a lot of weeks. We were talking about maybe a platform or some opportunity to be able to connect researchers from different universities who 
who are researching on certain similar topics. And I think that building in the next project phase a kind of platform for exactly these connections to build is exactly the right thing to do and I just wanted to say something positive because I think the Alliance is doing a really good job in in this development and that's why I'm also proud of everyone who is part of the Alliance because I love how this turned out and I think this is such a good project and I have learned so much and I have gained so much experience and just the personal benefit that I have gotten from being part of the Alliance. I wish everyone who was part of the Alliance would have this feeling too. I wish I could transfer it to everybody because I have met so many beautiful people and I have traveled a lot and I have gained so many beautiful experiences. I wish that we could stay on this like this forever. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say something? Uh, so what you mentioned just the, with the research, I don't know if you know Tiforetti, but there's a platform that is being created like a I tool that, and is and is for it's researchers. Not, we were talking about like an online platform it's where... It's that they just made yeah, it. I know, that's why <laughs> oh, okay. it's existing because oh, okay, okay. we talked about it, yeah. I, thought, okay. I just wanted to kind of... Um, do the question? Maybe I, I maybe I you already have this question in your notebook. <laughs> it's basically like this, like I don't know how to say. It, like the intention is there, the will is there. How can we do to create the network? Like, is it feasible to open the opportunities for internships to all the students equally? Like, for example, Distrito Digital. Can, oh, I was going to speak in Spanish. <laughs> Can it like uh, provide the same opportunities for students in University of Alicante than for students in University of Sofia or Saland? Uh, is it feasible? Is it possible to do that? Or like, it's not directly to you. It was just an example, but kind of. <laughs> but I can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just um, to, to reply to your question, yes, it's for three companies that are located in Distrito Digital. Since we're a public company, we cannot do anything, but we f f facilitate everything. But so we do without doing nothing. Right? It's it's tricky thing. Uh, it's a joke. But yes, uh, we, uh, we, we give this opportunity to the companies and we explain them how can they do this contract with the university, this agreement, and all the process. It's really difficult for companies, but we understand that in order to avoid or try to lower that risk that we were talking before, it's important to go through the entire process. And yes, it's possible for sure to make it with all other universities. We are glad to explain all these procedures to our companies. And uh, for sure, it's, it's possible. And um, uh, thank you for the, these kind words, because it's important for all of us uh, listening that we're going in the right direction. And uh, talking about the risks, uh, I think that it's happening, the exploitation is happening in all kind of internships, private companies, public companies, museums, all, all of them and it's happening because of the not not because some of them are bad or good it's not it's because of the lack of regulation or urgency of situations that they cannot or they can have to just run and not don't look back and uh, it's important to 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 have these responsible people that uh, are point punished uh, in some kind if it's not right because if there's like reaction to the bad action yes it will work but if not everybody will keep doing this and uh, for example I'm a, a tutor for a couple of students that are doing internship and I'm responsible by myself uh, from the university part because they're also a tutor from the um, company part we have all the students in our university have to two tutors uh, and I'm responsible to be um, to attend to the student and to hear what is happening and if there's something wrong to take action because if not I'm the responsible for that so of course there should be the agreement but there also should be this like m at least monthly uh, how are you doing what are what is happening are you okay if not are you doing copies because doing copies it's not interesting for nobody 
not for student, not for the entity it's uh, been, right? So let's try to, from all the parts, avoid that. And to reply to, reply to Alessandro, just to maybe, maybe like a suggestion, the students that go abroad and come back to the, univers to the university, um, it's a, a huge value actually, how to, uh, how to bring it and make it visible. Uh, we all know that our university are changing a lot and it's not longer like I'm staying four years and I'm leaving the university forever. All, many universities are looking for continuity to, to have these students like linked to university in the longer term. There are a lot of initiatives like alumni uh, where the old students meet, uh, they talk about their experiences, they mentor younger students, and I think it's important for the students that go out and come back to involve them in all this kind of initiatives because they make this local university ecosystem bigger and stronger and more valuable for other students. That because it, that's happening because it improves this connection between students and it's so important. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, okay. We can, um, I, 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 I probably our time is yeah our time is finished. So okay, uh, we we try to put on the table uh, some concepts. Uh, uh, probably we if you want uh, if we want to organize uh, a trainership uh, inside the T4U alliance we will need uh, a platform uh, we will need uh, some rules uh, uh, and uh, and so we have to work uh, a lot on this uh, to work more uh, but um, i think it uh, it can be a good uh, start uh, I want to thanks uh, everybody <laughs>